Assalamu alaikum. Okay. So today we are going to discuss the P2 exam. So let's get started with the very first question. Question one is an identity. We need to show that ln x cube minus 4x minus ln x square minus 2x is equivalent or identical to ln x plus 2. So this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. Okay. So we have two sides of this identity. We can either start with left hand side and make it look like the right hand side, or we can start off with right hand side and make it look like the left hand side, or we can uh, work at both the sides at a time and make them look alike, right? Okay, so today for this identity particularly, you need to see, it depends on your question. In my case, I can see that the left hand side is somewhat the expanded version of the right hand side. So I'll start off by working with the left hand side and I'll make it look like the right hand side. Okay. So the left hand side is ln x cube minus 4x minus ln x square minus 2x, right? I can write it as this. I can take x common. So I'll be left with this minus ln. Again, I'll take x common. And I'll be left with x minus 2. All right. Now I'll use a rule which we use for natural log that if I have a function or maybe two functions of x, let's say a, b, I can write it as ln a plus ln b. So let's say x is a and x squared minus 4 is b. I can write it as ln x plus ln x squared minus 4 minus ln x minus ln x minus 2. Okay. So I have basically used this rule in the third step for both these natural logs. Okay. I can cancel out this with this. And again, the x square minus 4 can be written as x plus 2 into x minus 2. Why? Because let's say if this is a square minus b square, I can write it as a plus b into a minus b, right? So by using these rules, I have to simplify it. Minus ln x minus 2 would come as it is. Again, for this, I will use this rule. So this would be ln x plus 2 plus ln x minus 2 with a minus sign and then minus ln x minus 2. This and this can be cancelled. So I'm left with ln x plus 2 and this is basically my right hand side okay so i'll quickly revise basically we had this identity now you need to understand this thing that this is not a hard and fast rule your way your method would vary from question to question here i can see that left hand side looks like an expanded version of the right hand side right so i have started work my working with the left hand side so this is the left hand side i have factorized it why because i know that I'll be able to use these rules. And I know that by cancelling everything, I'll be left with ln x plus 2. And when we had x square minus 4, I know that I can write it as x plus 2, x minus 2. And again, I can use this rule to uh, convert this product into sum. And finally, I'm left with ln x plus 2. That is nothing but my right hand side. Okay. So we are done with the very first question. Let's talk about the second question. Second question is an inequality. So it is solve the inequality and this is uh, our inequality. You need to understand one thing. This is not your basic or um, typical kind of an inequality. It has mod. So this inequality needs to be uh, solved in a particular way. Okay, let me give you a little background of what mod is. Let's say I have A. So mod of A would be A. But mod of minus A would also be A. So if I have a negative integer, a negative factor, a negative expression, anything that is negative, my mod is basically making it positive. So when I will remove this mod, I would not know if the uh, functions 3x minus 5 and x plus 3 is positive or negative. So just remember, the rule is to break down this inequality with mod into two simple usual inequalities, okay? So one would be 3x minus 5 less than x plus 3. And the other one is going to be 3x minus 5 greater than x 
plus 3 and a minus sign would come here. Okay, so this is very easy. We have simply removed the mod, but for this one, since we have this assumption as well, we need to consider this possibility as well. We are not sure if our uh, factors, internal factor x plus 3 is positive or negative. We are not sure if x minus 5 is positive or negative. So whenever you have mod and it's an inequality, you need to write it down like this, okay? So we'll have two inequalities as a result of this one inequality with mod, okay? Let's just simplify it this way. So five would come here plus three, and this is two X less than eight. And this is three X minus five greater than minus X minus three. I can take X to the left hand side. So I have minus three plus five, and here I have X less than four. And this is 4x greater than 2. So x is greater than 1 by 2. Now I have two intervals. One interval is saying that x is less than 4. And the other one is saying that x is greater than 1 by 2. I need to identify the common region. So this basically is my common region. And this is my answer as well, right? So this is how I have solved inequality. Whenever you have an equation and you've been asked to solve it, you find the values of x. Since it is an inequality and you have to solve it, you find a range for x, okay? Now, this is part one. You will see in part two, we'll be using part one. So just know that we got one by two less than x and x is less than four. This is the answer, okay? I'll directly write down the answer first and then we'll read the question. Okay, so this is the answer. And because of this, hence I knew that we'll be using this in this part as well, right? So the second part is, Hence, find the greatest integer n satisfying the inequality. This is the inequality. Now, you need to understand one thing. If you have hence, it means that you will be using the first part as well. So, I can see that this equation and the one I had in first part, I'll show you again, this one, things are very same, okay? We only have a difference with x and there's another factor over there instead of x. So, basically, they have this as x. So I can say that x is equal to 3, 0 0.1n. And why am I doing this? I'm doing this because of this hence. They want us to solve it using the first part, okay? So since I'm saying that I can use, um, I can replace x by this, let's just replace x by this and then we'll read the question again, okay? First, you should write down the relevant data you have and then you can read the question. So the question says, you need to find the greatest integer satisfying the inequality. So we had this inequality, we had hence. So we have basically converted it into this simple inequality with two inequality signs. However, we will only be using one part. Since we have greatest, so we will use this part only. Why? Because we need greatest integer n. Okay. All right. So now to simplify it, I will take log on both sides, this would be log three, 0 0.1 n would come here. And this is log four. I can take log three to that side and this can come here. This is how logs work. So this is log four divided by log three, all right. And this n is going to be less than 12.6. And the question was to find the greatest integer. Now, integer is a whole number. The greatest integer that is less than 12.6 is 12. So this is the answer, right? Okay, so here our clue was hence. We had hence. We knew that we'd be using the first part. So without thinking about anything, I just wrote down my answer of first part. And then I read the question again. And I could see that, yes, there is a similarity in the inequality I had in first part and in this inequality. And the uh, similarity was this, that instead of x, we have 3 to the 0 0.1 n. And simply I have replaced 3 to the 0 0.1 n with x. And I have used this part only. Why? Because I had greatest, right? And we had this. So we need to find the greatest integer. Integer is a whole number. 12.6 is not a whole number. n is less than 12.6. So the greatest integer less than 12.6 is 12, right? Okay. So let's just um, do question three. Find the equation of the normal to the curve. This is the curve at the point this. Now, 
we need to find the equation. Whenever you need to find an equation, we need to find m and a point, right? We just need to have these two things. So we do have our point 3, 1, but we need to think about the m, m of normal. And this is our curve. So let me tell you, there's a rule. Let's say this is a curve or maybe this is m of a line. And this is the m of a line that is perpendicular to this line. The product would be minus 1, right? Just know that and I'll tell you how to solve it. Okay, so this is normal to the curve. This means that m, what is m? m is the slope derivative dy by dx. You can call it anything, right? So basically, dy by dx of this equation can be written this way equals minus one. This m dash is basically the m of normal, right? So we need to find dy, dy by dx and then I can rearrange the equation to get m dash, okay? So we know what we have to do. We have to find dy by dx of this equation. But the question is how to do that? Okay, let's get started. Let's just write everything first. We need to find the derivative of x square ln y plus 2x plus 5y equals 0. Why? Because derivative of 11 with respect to x is 0, right? Now I need to differentiate the left hand side. So I have x square ln y. This is a product. So I'll be using product rule. So let's say I can take x square as it is derivative of ln y. Okay. Now we need to think about it. I need to write down the derivative of L and Y with respect to X and I will use the chain rule. So the chain rule would be D L and Y by D Y dot D Y by D X. Okay. Now derivative of L and Y with respect to Y is one by one. So I will have one by Y and D Y by D X would come here like this. Plus, since this is the product rule, I need to write down L and Y as it is and derivative of X squared, that is 2X. Plus, derivative of 2X with respect to X would be 2 simply. And of 5Y, it would be 5 dy by dx equals 0. Now, I need to take dy by dx common. So, I have X squared by Y plus 5 and I'll take the rest of the things to the right hand side minus 2 minus 2x l and y would come here okay now we need to take this factor to the right hand side just so we have dy by dx on this side only minus 2 minus 2x l and y divided by x square by y plus 5. Now we need to plug in the point 3, 1. x would be 3 and y would be 1 in this dy by dx to get my dy by dx, okay? So dy by dx is going to be minus 2, minus 2. Instead of x, I'll write 3. And instead of y, I'll write 1. Divided by, I'll get 9 plus 5 here, okay? So this would be 0 because ln1 is 0 and I'll get minus 2 by 14. So this is minus 1 by 7. Now I will use this here, right? So dy by dx into m dash is minus 1. dy by dx into m dash is minus 1. So this would imply that m dash is going to be 7. Now, why do I need m dash? Because I have 7 and I have my point. So, I can find the equation of normal. So, the equation, the general equation is y minus y naught equals m x minus x naught. Okay. Just give me a second. My pen is not working. Okay. I'll just rub it and I'll rewrite it. Okay. All right, so we have, so basically till here, we have our point, we have m dash. 
and I simply need to use the general equation where we have y minus y naught equals m x minus x naught. So my y minus 3 equals m x minus 1. And what is m? I can write 7, right? m dash is 7. And m dash is basically the m of the normal equation. So I have y equals 7x minus, this is 3, because x naught is 3 and y is 1. And this is 1. Okay. All right. This is 1, right? So we have 7x minus 21 plus 1. And finally, we get y equals 7x minus 20. This is the equation of my normal line, right? So here, our task was basically to find dy by dx, okay? Whenever you have been asked to find an equation, you need to understand one thing. Every equation needs a point and derivative. And m is the usual term we use for derivative, but I'm using m dash just to differentiate, okay? m dash is the derivative of my normal, right? So the question is that, okay, we can use this formula to find the derivative. We have a point and we would be able to find the curve. But for using this dy by dx into m dash equals minus one, we need to find dy by dx. And this is a mixed equation, right? So here we will basically be using implicit differentiation to differentiate it. The challenge was with x squared ln y, we'll be using product rule. And for finding out the derivative of ln y, we will use the chain rule. This is what the chain rule looks like. And once we were able to find dy by dx, we simply used it to find the derivative of normal, that would be seven. We had our point 0.31 and we used this general equation. We plugged in 1 in y naught, 3 in x naught, 7 in m to find out the equation of normal, right? Okay. Now we have a fourth question. In fourth question, you need to integrate tan squared 3x. You know that you cannot integrate tan squared directly because we have never come across an integral of this type where we could ever, you know, integrate tan squared directly. But we can use some trigonometry here to convert tan squared into another expression and then we can integrate it, right? So tan squared 3x can be written as secant squared 3x minus 1. And now if I am asked to integrate this, I can integrate this uh, expression to get the same answer. So I will integrate secant squared 3x minus 1 with respect to x. This can be written as the integral of this side plus, sorry, this would be minus 1 because we have minus there. So we'll have minus x, right? And now we need to integrate this secant squared 3x. So the integral of secant squared 3x would be tan. 3x and I have to divide it by the derivative of this that is 3 minus x plus c. So we always have the constant term. So here the trick was to first convert tan squared 3x into any other expression which we can integrate directly because we can see that it only has three marks. They would not expect us to first you know open up tan by sign cos and do it in that complicated way. Whenever you have been, uh, like whenever you are solving past papers or you're giving actual exam, you have your marks, right? You know that for this question, the maximum marks you can get is three. So once you know that you will be only given three marks, if you're able to do this question correctly, just know that the working would be less, right? So this is your hint. And since we cannot integrate tan square three X directly, we know that it would be integrated by basically converting tan squared 3x into something else. Now, this is a trigonometrical function. So, this is a very famous identity. Tan squared x is basically secant squared x minus 1. Since we had 3 here, 
so i can write it down like this okay all right so we are done with that let's do the second part find the exact value of this show all necessary working now this integral itself looks very complicated it is a fraction and to integrate fractions we do not have the quotient rule like we have in differentiation we can either use you know partial fractions or different things like those but this is exponential we cannot use partial fractions here right so we will make things simple first and then uh, start integrating okay so i can write this thing like this i can divide both e to the 3x and 4 by e to the x separately and this is basically going to give me 2x plus 4 e to the minus x dx and remember your limits right because you need to tell the exact value okay then we have to integrate e to the 2x so the integral of e to the 2x is e to the 2x as it is with uh, the derivative of the power coming in denominator minus why minus because i have e to the minus x there 4 e to the minus x and initially we had plus so when i'll divide it by the derivative that is minus 1 i would get this and i need to integrate it from 1 to 0 okay now let's just put 1 first i will have e to the 2 into 2 minus e to the minus 1 with 4 then minus sign is going to come and i'll get e to the 0 by 2 minus 4 e to the 0 right so this is going to give me e to the 2 by 2 Minus four e to the minus one minus one by two because e to the zero is one plus four because this is minus so minus and minus will be plus. Finally, I can write it e to the two two minus four e to the minus one plus seven by two. so this is the answer i did not write c here because this is a definite integral okay whenever you have limits you need to be very clear that you will not write the constant so i'll give you a quick recap here this was the integral initially it looks very complicated okay but you need to make things simpler for yourself okay you can write this thing as this thing and once you have this you know that when bases are same you have e in numerator e in denominator you can subtract the powers since they are being divided so i simply subtracted 3x minus x i got 2x and here i had e to the x in denominator i'll take it to numerator the power will become negative so i'll have e to the minus x now this is very easy okay it is very easy to integrate e to the 2x and 4 e to the minus x and yeah this is how we have to integrate it with 1 and 0 as our limits we simply integrate and then plug in the limits and then we get our answer okay all right so this is the next question all right the polynomial p of x is defined by p of x equals 5x cube plus ax square plus bx minus 16 where a and b are constants it is given that x minus 2 is a factor okay This is the polynomial, and x minus two is a factor. So when I will insert x equals two in x, I'll get zero instead of p of x. Okay, all right. And let's just read the question first. And that the remainder is twenty-seven when p of x is divided by x plus one. Okay. So we have two informations. Let's just work till here first, and then we'll read the rest of the question. Okay. Now, since x minus two is a factor. so using x equals 2 in p of x we get p of x equals 0 why because x minus 2 is a factor right so if this is minus 2 we'll have x plus 2 x equals to 2 okay all right so let's just plug in x equals 2 in p of x this is 5 Two cube plus a two square plus b into two minus sixteen equals zero. So through this equation, we will get this is basically five into eight plus four a 
प्लस टू बी माइनस सिक्सटीन इक्वल जीरो एंड वी विल गेट फोर ए प्लस टू बी इक्वल माइनस सिक्सटीन प्लस सॉरी प्लस सिक्सटीन माइनस फोर्टी All right, and now we will have four a plus two b equals minus twenty four. So this is the first equation. We need to find a b. We need to have another equation. Okay, let's create that other equation. And the second piece of information is that the remainder is twenty seven when p of x is divided by x plus one. Okay, so this means that x plus one is not a factor. All right, that is okay, but we need to find a b, right? So here, basically, we need to use x equals minus one in p of x, right? And we get p of x. Equals twenty seven because this is what they are saying. When we divide x minus two, we get zero as our remainder, so we get zero here. But when we divide x plus one, we get twenty seven. So for x plus one, we will use x equals minus one. Ah, uh, think about it this way: that x plus one is zero, and so you will get x equals minus one. So and here we use x equals two because we had x minus two as our factor, so we get x equals two. Okay, all right. So again we will use this. If I insert minus one, I'll get and I use p of x as twenty seven. I'll get twenty seven equals five into minus one cube plus a. Into minus one square plus b into minus one minus sixteen. Right. This is the equation, and I will use minus one in place of x. Okay. Right now, let's just simplify it. We have twenty seven minus one cube is minus one plus a minus b minus sixteen. And I can take all the numbers to that side, so I'll get twenty-seven plus sixteen plus five equals a minus b, and this would be forty-eight equals a minus b. Okay. Now I'll get a equals forty-eight plus b, and the other equation was which I got through first piece of information. Is this right? So this is one equation. This is second equation. And okay, I I'll use a equals forty eight plus b in this equation. So I'll get four into forty eight plus b plus two b equals minus twenty four. Four into forty eight is one nine two plus Six b equals minus twenty four, so six b equals minus twenty four minus one nine two, and I'll get b equals minus thirty six. B is minus thirty six. I can use it here. A equals forty eight plus b. So instead of b, I'll get minus thirty six. So A is twelve, so I have A equals twelve and B equals minus thirty six. Okay. So here, the question was to find A and B with two pieces of information. Now we need to understand these two informations, use them mathematically to get two equations because we need to find two variables. Okay. Whenever we have been asked to find two variables. We need two equations. If we had to find three uh, variables, we need three equations, and we'll be solving them simultaneously. Okay, so yeah, 
So basically, x minus 2 is a factor of p of x. If something is a factor, it means remainder is 0. So p of x is 0. And x minus 2, when we have x minus 2 as factor, I can write x equals 2. So I'll use x equals 2 and p of x equals 0. And I will get this equation. I'll simplify it and I'll get this, right? And then I will use x equals minus 1 because of this, because here they are saying the remainder is 27 when p of x is divided by x plus 1. So I have x plus 1, so I can write it as x equals minus 1. And p of x would be 27 because this is the remainder it's given, right? So I'll use this equation. I'll simplify it. And I'll get this 2. This was 1. This is 2. And now I have my two simultaneous equations which can be solved. And finally, I got b equals minus 36 and e equals 12. Okay. So for now, these much questions are enough. In the next video, I'll complete the past paper. Right. So yeah. So we solved five questions. One was from integration. Then we had to make equation of normal. And then we had this inequality, which had mod. So we know that whenever we have mod, it would be converted to two inequalities. Okay, we cannot just do it directly. We need to convert this one inequality into two inequalities. And students, be very clear. Whenever you need to solve something, solve means to find the values of x. Since this was our inequality, we will find the range of x, right? And whenever you have hence, hence means you need to find, use the previous part. So you guys must remember without even reading the question, I wrote the answer of previous part because I knew to this hence that I would be using the previous part. And then finally, I could see that this is why they have written hence, that this inequality and the inequality they had given in first part are very same. So I can just replace x by 3 to the 0 0.1 n and I'll use this part. Why? Because I need to find the greatest integer. Okay. And then I got n less than 12.6. So the integer that is less than 12.6, but is the greatest in this interval is 12. So n was 12. And then uh, the first question was to prove the identity. So here I told you initially, we can do it in three ways. Either solve left hand side first and make it look like the right hand side or you know do it otherwise or just play with both these sides but the, but the trick in this case was that here i can see clearly that my left hand side is bigger than the right hand side so certainly i can play with the left hand side i can first expand it and then i can uh, you know simplify things cut things to make it look like the right hand side. So this is what I did. I used logarithmic rules. I know that if I have natural log a, b, where a and b are two functions of x, I can write it as ln a plus ln b. And I took x common and x common here as well. So I knew that this is with minus sign. This is with plus sign. So ln x and ln minus x could be canceled. And finally, I was able to prove that my left hand side is equal to the right hand side. All right, so this was our past paper. It is basically May, June paper of 2019. And yeah, this was a P2 paper. So, so far we have discussed five questions. In the next video, I'll complete this past paper just so you can use it for your reference, okay? Take care, Allah first. Thank you so much, students.